brothers in the congregation, you'll give them a flower. You see it? If not, you gotta go on and give it to your later. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. It's just a very interesting Mother's Day, so let's celebrate um, whatever have you, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, for my family, we're going to have takeout, special occasion, so that's going to be fun at our usual pizza place, and just have a nice dinner at home. And so before we begin, let me just start us off in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for all that you have given us. We thank you, Father God, for giving us the resources to be able to uh, put out these videos, Lord, for service every week, Father God. We thank you so much, Lord, for always being there, even in the most uncertain times, to our most joyous times, Lord. And I pray that as we celebrate the mothers here and our mother figures that we have grown up with, Lord, I pray that you help us to uh, just see the joy in these times, Lord, to see and to appreciate the blessings that you have given us and the blessings that you have given us in the forms of these mothers, Lord. And we thank you so much, Father God, for just giving us the means to be able to celebrate. And we pray that you help to focus our hearts, focus our minds, and just focus our voices to you, Lord, as we sing these songs. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.
Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our Sunday service. I'd like to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and grandmothers. There's a statistic that church attendance is almost as high on Mother's Day as Sunday, as Easter Sunday. On the other hand, attendance on Father's Day is not quite so high. It's good that we're respecting God and our mothers of service. And let's see if we can do something to boost attendance on Father's Day when SIP is lifted. We heard this week that Phase 2 of California's plan to reopen is on schedule for Friday, May 8th. This includes reopening restaurants with curbside pickup, allowing for certain office jobs based for certain office-based jobs where home where home work is impossible. And phase three will include reopening of businesses such as barbershops, sporting events, and worship services. Now there's no time frame for phase three or subsequent phases, but let us pray that this will take place sooner rather than later when conditions are safe to do so. And I hope that we're all staying connected virtually. If you haven't already, I want to encourage everyone to join our online fellowships. It's a great way to stay connected, and the study materials are extremely worthwhile. The Friday evening session is organized by Gordon, and the Sunday evening session is run by Stan. Please reach out to them and consider joining one or both if you have the time. Let us now confess our sins before God. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. We acknowledge that we have, we have sinned in thought and words and our actions and in things that we have not done. We ask that you forgive us and that you keep us from temptation. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Judges, chapter 4, verse 14 to 24. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day of the Lord, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword, and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Herosheth, Hegoyim, and all Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jal, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because there was an allegiance between Jabin, king of Hazer, and the family of Heber the Kenite. Jal went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I'm thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened the skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Standing in the doorway of the tent, he told her, If someone comes by and asks you, Is there someone in there? Say no. But Jal, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. Just then, Barak came by in pursuit of Sisera, and Jal went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you're looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple, dead. On that day, God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites. And the hand of the Israelites 
pressed harder and harder against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. Let us now together recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our message today is motherhood and faith. In the book of Judges, the Israelites again rebel against the Lord after the death of Ehud, and so God sent Jabin, the king of Canaan, to punish them. However, God is just and merciful. He forgives us if we ask him sincerely. So the Israelites cried out for deliverance, and through Deborah, a prophet and a wife, led the Israelites to victory against the Canaanites. In the book of Judges, Deborah is portrayed as the matriarch of the Israelites. In ancient times, female leaders were far and few, and warrior leaders were exceedingly rare. In Asian cultures, you know, we have we have Mulan, the female warrior who leads the Chinese Imperial Army against the invaders from the north. So having a, a, a female leader and having a female warrior leader was uh, so rare and so extreme. And it's refreshing to see, to read in the book of Judges, that we have a, a strong female figure who is, who is faithful to the Lord, who is capable, and it is she that delivers the Israelites from the Canaanites. In Judges chapter 4, verse 6, it says, She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops, to the Kishan River and give him into your hands. In Deborah, we see a military leader who delivers her people from the hands of King Jabin. On the battlefield, she displays motherly wisdom by leading the enemy to Barak and allowing him to take credit for the victory. As a, as a leader and mother figure, you know, she recognized that, that the male commanders working with her needed recognition and credit for this conquest. She was willing to share the glory with Barak and his men, delegating responsibility at precisely the right moment. Her effective leadership style delivered her people from this oppression, and the results speak for themselves. In Judges chapter 5, 7 to 9 and 31, it says, Villagers in Israel would not fight. They held back until I, Deborah, arose, until I arose a mother in Israel. God chose new leaders when war came to the city gates, but not a shield or spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is with Israel's princes, with the willing volunteers among the people. Praise the Lord, so may all your enemies perish, Lord, but may all who love you be like the sun when it rises in its strength. Then the land had peace 40 years. These verses tell us that those who trust in the Lord's servants will prosper. Those who accept his will will inherit the richness of his kingdom. Those who love him will radiate his love for the world to see. 
the Virgin Mary is probably the most beautiful expression of the mother figure in Western culture. She is the mother of our Lord Jesus. She's holy, loving, and submissive to the will of God. At the Annunciation, she did not quite understand what the angel Gabriel was telling her. But as a humble servant, she submitted to God's plan. In Luke chapter 1, verse 31 to 35 and 38, it says, You will conceive and give birth to a son. You are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the only one, so the, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Now imagine for a minute that, that, Mary, that Mary said no and did not submit to God's will. What would have happened? We would not have had the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. None of what we read in the Gospels would have happened. And let us look at our own lives and how often we have said no to God's will. How did that make us feel? How did we, how did we respond? And, and, and do, we, do we look at the circumstances of what made us say no? In Asian families, there is this tendency towards raising our children to be, to be successful in, in certain professions, engineering, medicine, law. Entering religious life isn't quite the same in terms of prestige and wealth. It used to be that being a minister, being a priest, conveyed a level of prestige equal to to being a doctor or a lawyer. In the 21st century, that's no longer the case, unfortunately. Parents have fought with their sons and daughters over entering religious life. Parents have said no to God's will through their children, essentially. What happened in this, uh, uh, in this particular case what needed to happen was a rigorous process where parents and children undertake the discernment process together so that both sides will come away with some assurance that this is indeed God's will and then come up with a plan for success. On the other hand, how often are we saying yes to God's will? Have we said yes more often than no? When we say no, we're, we're saying that we don't need to depend on God, His grace, His mercy, or His love. We think we can go it alone, which is, of course, a fallacy. We need to submit to God's will because we lack the wisdom of knowing His plan for us. And His plan is far more comprehensive than we can know at this moment. If we can say yes to him, if we submit to his will, God will reveal his path for us. And God helps us to submit to his will by calling us to move closer to him. He has given us the church to help us in this regard, to support each other, to grow our faith together as a church body. So that together, it is easier to answer God's call to be Christ-like. And if we follow that calling, 
will say yes more often than we'll say no. And how does saying yes to God make us feel? Accepting his will will bring us immense joy because we're not resisting anymore. Our relationship becomes harmonious. We're respecting him by entrusting in his wisdom and we will receive the goodness that he will bring us and to those around us. Mother Teresa is probably the greatest symbol of humanitarianism in the 20th century. Hearing her, her story is inspirational to the goodness that is possible within us. Mother Teresa was born in 1910 into a Catholic family in Macedonia and was baptized as Agnes Boshauhu. At the age of 12, she felt the call to be a missionary in order to spread the love of Christ. At the age of 18, she joined the Sisters of Laredo and began teaching in Calcutta, India in 1931. The poverty around the school deeply moved her, and in 1948, she left St. Mary's High School to work with the poorest of the poor in the slums of Calcutta. She started with no resources and depended on Providence to sustain her work. Soon, volunteers and financial resources followed, allowing her to expand her work in the community and as well as internationally. In 1950, she started her own order, the Missionaries of Charity. And today, the order comprises of both men and women who care for those that no one else cares about. The missionaries provide worldwide relief in the wake of natural catastrophes, epidemics, famine, and refugees. And in, 19, in 1979, Mother Teresa received the Nobel Prize for her work in bringing help to suffering humanity. Mother Teresa stands as one of the greatest humanitarians of the 20th century. In summing up her own life, Mother Teresa said, by citizenship, I am an Indian. By faith, I am a Catholic nun. As to my calling, I belong to the world. As to my heart, I belong entirely to the heart of Jesus. Mother Teresa said yes to God's will in the boldest possible way. Can we say yes to God's will just like Mother Teresa? The circumstances in which she worked were, were unique. And so perhaps it, it's difficult to expect the same results that she achieved. But let us be open to what God is calling us to do and contribute in our own ways. There are also times when trusting in God's will may not be easy. We may feel like saying no to God's will. Mother Teresa left her comfortable teaching job behind convent doors to minister to the poorest of the poor in Calcutta. Again, we have to consider the possibility of moving outside our comfort zone and contribute in some meaningful way either great or small. One way we can contribute is through an existing nonprofit. Meals on Wheels San Francisco prepares and delivers meals for homebound seniors. Consider making a, a contribution to Meals on Wheels. Their website is www.mowsf.org. And if you know of any senior citizens that need assistance, please let, the, let our church know and we can find the best ways to assist them. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our mothers who care for us and nurture us. We ask that you help us to always respect, honor, and love our mothers and our fathers. We also pray for our leaders that you continue to grant them wisdom so that they may reopen our communities and businesses when it is wise to do so. We ask that you bring a quick end to this health crisis, and we ask that you bring healing and comfort 
to those who have negatively impacted. Continue to watch over those on the front lines. Keep them out of harm's way as they serve the most needy. We also ask that you help the worldwide economy to recover and to heal the rift that exists between ethnic groups. Bring us together. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In place of our usual offering, I ask that you consider donating to the local charities in your communities and to mail in your offerings to the, to the church and to contribute to your, to your tithing. Thank you. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Have a terrific week, everybody. Stay safe and stay connected.